Hey, Jeremy, window seat. We just arrived in Toronto. We're here on a long layover, on a long flight from Canada back home to the US. We've got six hours. We don't want to just hang out in the airport. We want to get out and explore this city. No way the hell I'm going out there. It's wild. It feels sturdy. I think we're good. It's unbelievable. Oh my God, it feels so weird. How much can we accomplish in a short period of time? And will we make our return flight? We're going to make it. Why not? Why wouldn't we make it? I think we're almost out of time because there's all kinds of mayhem in downtown Toronto right now. Find out in this episode of Window Seat. are coming in hot from Europe, en route from Dublin to Denver with a long layover in Toronto, Ontario, and nothing to do. Okay, so we gotta go out. It is the perfect time to get out and explore. If you've seen our videos, you know we are big advocates of getting out of the airport and using those layovers to see the city. You should do it too. Take a chance, live a little, guarantee it is worth it. get him on camera when he comes out. Now every second counts and you gotta move fast if you've only got six hours like us. Our uh, escape from the airport is being delayed just a little bit because Sean's been flagged at custom for, for some reason he's been hanging out there for like five minutes we hope it's not too long because if it's much longer that's gonna delay our entire trip into Toronto put this entire uh, expedition into jeopardy so wait until he comes out I guarantee you he's gonna be raging about this let's see which is why we were worried when moments after arrival we hit a snag dude oh okay what happened so they said I declared something then I'm after about two minutes of talking to the person after waiting in line for however long that was like, okay you can go lesson learned pay close attention to what you check on those customs forms all right, first things first, we can't lug our suitcases into the city, so we found this place, the Excess Baggage Company. We're gonna go explore Toronto. We've used them before in London on a long layover. They have them at airports all over the world. We'll put a link in the description below. It's a great service. They'll hold onto your bags until you return to the airport. It's a little pricey. For six bags, it cost us about 100 bucks US. But that was a small price to pay for not having to pull our luggage all over Toronto. Okay, thank you. We'll see you in a bit. Now, here's the great thing about Pearson International and a lot of other great international airports. They have an express train from the airport to the center of the city. It costs a little more than nine bucks US each way per person, and it gets there quick, about 25 minutes. Along the way, you get to see the city. It's a tall building. And as we approach downtown, can you do it? The first tourist attraction on our list starts to get a little too real for Sean. You're gonna make me, so yeah. You may remember from our time in Dubai. No, nope, still no. Or when we traversed one of the scariest bridges in Europe. I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> Can't see, not looking, don't shake the bridge. My God, dude, dude, dude. Sean has a debilitating fear of heights. All right, so first stop, we believe, is gonna be CN Tower. It's the tallest structure in all of Canada. Like, hey, them and gets freaked out at the mere thought. We're lacking a video where I freak out in a while. So it's only natural we take him 1,400 feet into the air to the top of one of the tallest freestanding structures in the world. We're doing this for you and your sheer entertainment. This is the CN Tower, the most identifiable landmark in all of Toronto. Two million people come here every year. That's really the, the gist of what we're doing here. Most have no problem at all, but it's clear this ain't gonna be easy for Sean. Yeah, give me a nice high five. Woo! Yeah, awesome, awesome work. We're actually going easy on him. They have an edge walk where you go outside and lean over the edge while harnessed to a rail. We're not doing that. We couldn't. I mean, look at the fear in his face and the deep breaths as we take the dizzy high-speed elevator all the way to the top in less than a minute. It's open on one thing, as you can see. It's so you can get a nice view out there, but if you're like me, I'm staring directly to the back of that elevator. I don't want to see it. So that or the floor, I don't want to see out there. I'm, my knees will shake. They were already like shaking a little bit, just knowing how high up I am. All the while, the city skyscrapers shrinking below us as we climb higher and higher. Then the jaw-dropping views, 114 stories above the city, are revealed 360 degrees of glass and goosebumps. The perfect mix of height and horror. It's high. This is not a normal building because we're out over things. So I'm kind of not doing well right now. Breathtaking views. You got Lake Ontario over there. You can see all of downtown right here. Uh, I'm not as scared as Sean, but I still don't want to lean on here. I would be a little more afraid of that, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's pretty cool. I would check it out. Even though this place has been open nearly 50 years, they're constantly upgrading it, adding new technology, and the view of this metropolis is ever-changing. The population of Toronto has doubled in the last 50 years and is expected to double again in the next 50. A little further, a little further. Don't worry, you're fine. We got you, bro. But if you really want to see the city from above... I hate all of you. ...and you're not faint of heart... 
you're going to love what awaits one floor below. A see-through floor made of two and a half inch thick glass that puts your fear to the test. There's no way in hell I'm going out there. Not doing it. And so Drew's from Chicago and he knows at Willis Tower, the glass is cracked twice. Twice. This looks a little more sturdy. Honestly. While Sean remains steadfast, our pal Drew ventures out onto the thick glass floor. Oh my God. This is so crazy. It feels wrong. And I decide to give it a go too. So yeah, it's like a thousand foot drop down to the frozen tundra of Ontario below us. But uh, I don't know. I don't mind it that much. I'll get down here and give it a little bird's eye yeah, view. You. It's, um, it, I, I have no idea how thick the glass is. Uh, I hope that it's very thick. Um, but, uh, you know, I subscribe to the theory that when your number's up, it is up, and there's not much you can do to change that. I suppose you could lessen your chances by not standing on something like this, but hey, <laughs> why not just go for it? It's fun. It, it feels sturdy. It feels definitely nice and thick and sturdy. As I knock glass, Sean knocks wood that we make it out of here alive. So, back down the elevator we go, back to street level, and back to our mission of seeing as much as we can of Toronto in a short period of time. So bottom line on CN Tower, it's a nice quick visit. Lines weren't long, especially on a weekend day like today. The views were great. Uh, there's construction going on, so you can get the full experience, but you definitely got the overall vibe. And if you're scared of heights, like Sean, <laughs> what a treat it really is. Uh, okay, so there's stop one. Now we're headed straight to the Hockey Hall of Fame for stop two. Along the way, we get some cool views of Canada's largest city. Right there next to us is the stadium where the Blue Jays, Canada's only remaining Major League Baseball team, play ball. We also passed a number of bars and businesses rolling out the red carpet for the NHL All-Star Game, which was happening just days after our visit. Then there are the skyscrapers, the cool architecture, the police, lots of police, lots and lots of police. Wait a minute, what exactly is happening here? <laughs> Right in front of the train station, we stumble onto a protest over the war in Gaza. Several hundred people on hand, making their voices heard. But at least from our vantage point, it never got out of hand. And despite the major police presence, there weren't any big problems. Once we've walked a few blocks from the protest in the shadow of the CN Tower, we finally reach destination number two. A mecca for hockey lovers the world over. This is the Hockey Hall of Fame. Located inside the architecturally stunning Brookfield Place. Oh wow, very cool. Tucked beneath a cluster of shops and a food court, you'll find the front entrance to hockey history. Oh, we're in the World Hockey Hall of Fame. It's really cool. It's weird to get here. You have to come down in like the basement of the square. In these hallowed halls, they pay tribute to the greatest teams, players, coaches, and referees to ever hit the ice. There's just a lot of history. Things to learn, things to see, just you know, artifacts of the game. And we're not just talking about the NHL. This place pays tribute to the sport played all around the world. 74 international teams recognized right here. From the frigid rinks of Northern and Eastern Europe to the blazing deserts of South Africa to some very unexpected places. No way. There's a North Korean jersey. What? There's even a full-scale replica of the Montreal Canadiens dressing room, a team that won 23 Stanley Cups. Pucks, sticks, and uniforms from some of the most historic hockey games and hockey players ever. There's a hall dedicated to hockey's biggest dynasties from the 1920s to today, filled with mementos and memorabilia. And this hall, called The Mask, paying tribute to the game's greatest puck stoppers, and it shows the major changes to goalie masks over the years. From the minors to the majors, college teams to Stanley Cup champions, this place has it all. And speaking of the Stanley Cup, we are Colorado Avalanche fans, recent winners of the biggest prize in hockey, so we couldn't wait to enter the Esso Great Hall. Oh, wow. So you get to see the Stanley Cup. I mean, I've gotten to stand next to it before, so have Jeremy and Drew, but it's always cool. Um, I saw it when the Avs won the Stanley Cup. Oh, well, before, actually, I got to uh, cover Media Day and meet like all the players and it was really cool seeing just how many countries were just sending people over to cover the Stanley Cup Finals because it's a worldwide event, you know. Also in the Great Hall, nearly every major trophy awarded in hockey and tributes to some of the past winners and game changers. This place is a game changer. It's got to be one of the coolest professional sports halls of fame in the world. And if you care even one iota about this sport, you're going to love it. 
and bring your kids because it's completely interactive. They have exhibits where you can practice being a goalie. Go 37. And you can practice shootouts against a virtual goalie. Oh. You get eight shots. Sean actually snuck four of them past the goalie. Not bad at all. No, it's not bad. Got a little lift, which is I'm playing a lot. Forget how to swing that thing. I liked street hockey when I was a little kid. So overall, a real win. I think that was cool as hell. Uh, awesome. If you're at all into hockey and its history and its international reach, this is the place for you. You've got a few souvenirs for uh, the family. So uh, great experience. And if you've got even just a couple hours in Toronto, head down there because it's uh, perfectly worth it. So we've accomplished CN Tower. We've accomplished Hockey Hall of Fame. And I think we're almost out of time because there's all kinds of mayhem in downtown Toronto right now. There's a pro-Palestine protest and you can hear them honking their horns in the background. So we're worried they may disrupt rail service or cause some other issues downtown. So we're just gonna head back to the airport and try to make that flight. And by the way, our fears were unfounded. There were no issues whatsoever. We headed right back to the train station, bought another express train ticket and began the journey back to Toronto Pearson International Airport with plenty of time to spare. But we weren't quite done. Drew wanted to experience some Canadian cuisine known as poutine. Right. So at a restaurant just past security, we ordered him a gooey plate of it. It was good. Um, it's definitely more of a appetizer, at least the version they had, than a meal. So I would keep that in mind if you order it yourself. And just like that, in one long layover, we experienced the highest of the highs in Toronto. We soaked in a lot of hockey history in the cathedral to the sport. I'd say we got a taste of this place that we never would have experienced had we not walked out those airport doors. All right, so there you have it, whether it's London or Toronto or Timbuktu, if you've got a long layover, get out of the airport, get into town, experience something interesting, create a good memory, even if it's just a few hours. We picked a couple of things that were pretty cool and you can do the same thing no matter where you're going. Get out and explore. Don't sit in the gate area or in the lounge at the airport. There's much more fun to be had. That is it for this episode of Window Seat from Toronto's Pearson Airport. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. We'll see you next time. And next time is next Friday when we drop another brand new video from our adventures all over the world. Please let us know in the comments what we missed in Toronto and what we should see next time we're there. Also, we'd love it if you liked and shared our video so we could spread the word. And most importantly, hit subscribe if you'd be so kind. Hope to see you back here soon. In the meantime, be sure to check out one of these other videos from Window Seat. Oh.